So today I'm here with John, or Jonathan Wells. He's the SR Sun Tour team manager. Are you the tour manager globally, or regionally? Uh, I am North American team manager, so okay. I take uh, care of everyone on this side of the, the, the world. Okay, and how did you end up in that position? Uh, I rode, I did the tech truck for, for quite a few years. Um, I've had team management positions in the past uh, through other like other jobs um, in my in my past, so um, I was doing the tech truck, so like back and forth, mostly like all the East Coast stuff. We had another employee that did the West Coast, um, and we just kind of combined that and slowly just built my way up. And here I am doing the North American team stuff. And yeah, yeah, it's a pretty sweet gig. Uh, real quick, I feel like you probably want to get this off your chest, but do you want to berate me? Berate me with how fast you were in my head. Uh, Do you want to just just let it out? Yes, you were faster than me. You beat me by quite a bit. Um. All right. I guess. Uh, so Colin, uh, <laughs> Colin talked big game, trained a lot. Oh, so you know, <laughs> get it. Yeah, I got off the couch um, and the couch. That I was the couch. The, the couch, couch of training. That was first class from Austria three days before where you were. Anyways. Um, so yeah, I mean, I came in off the couch and, <laughs> and just uh, beat him at the enduro. It was, uh, yeah. it was pretty sweet. I had a bunch of fun. It was a lot more uh, fun. I actually wasn't gonna ask ask this question, but you always wrote copper. That was your first time with Marquette. Yeah. How? What did you think of Marquette? Marquette was actually rad. It was a lot. Uh, for some reason, I always kind of skipped going up to Marquette and ended up going to just going straight up to copper. I just was like, I'm I need to go the highest. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. I just want to keep going as far as I can. Like, Possibly could get up in the wilderness and lose like cell phone service, and for some reason I never got a chance to really ride in Marquette. I did a couple like dealer visits there, um, at the shop in town, but I never actually for for a reason I don't know why for the reason I just didn't get a chance to ride. So that was my first time actually on those trails. Was I had one run and then <laughs> basically blind because I don't remember. I can't remember seven trails. Yeah. So I just remember like big features, and then now that I look back at it, I'll come with a way different approach. Because like trying to focus on a tough thing that isn't really the biggest time. Yeah, it's different <laughs> different areas. It was it was interesting and awesome. But yeah, this this last enduro that we did um, was a lot heavier than we usually do. Yeah, I'm a big boy too, and I don't pedal yeah. very well. But, um, I usually pedaling is okay. But has been better for me, but that day was not for me. But for yeah, it was, it was it was no, it was awesome. Um, people are saying it's a little bit more pedaling. I don't think it was. Uh, it was it was pretty rad. I it was well within my ability, uh, my like fitness and. I'd have definitely trained a little bit more for it. Yeah, I'm super excited. I love that whole series up there. And I wish if if I'm in if I'm not on the other side of the country or at another event, I definitely want to hit up as much as possible up there. So yeah. Speaking of training, where does Waffle House fit? Waffle is uh, Waffle House um, directly. Every single time I go south is my first stop and last stop. Is it good pre-trail ride? Oh, 100%. You just get the, the all-star, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All -star or like yeah. whatever it is, and, you know, the waitress, and just, like, the, like, just atmosphere just, like, starts off your day. It really is. It's a very, very uh, warm, comforting atmosphere <laughs> that we yeah. both enjoy. Yeah, Waffle House. So, what are your responsibilities as team manager? Um, basically getting product now, uh, out to everyone. I organize our trips. Just making sure, and a lot of budget, the budget side, okay. and basically you get a lot of that. Make it make it easier for the athletes and kind of get that uh, um, those requests and do video video projects and and just supply the budget for, for the riders and mm -hmm. go from there. And then I also do a lot of tech work too, so more on the race side. If well, I was in Europe for a month and just was able to work with the UR team and do a lot of just the custom tuning. Um, that stuff and do tuning before the season. That uh, before the season, I, I did a bunch with McKenna at Winrock um, just before he was leaving for Europe, and right. then ended up going to Europe to, to help out as well. Is you are? They're not out of North America, are they? Uh, no, it's basically a French-based like team, but there's I mean the athletes are like James, I mean they've been all over. So it's a global team. And uh, Mick is based on Colorado, and they wanted to do some testing, and it makes it easiest for me to drive to uh, Windrock and him to fly in versus me to like drive the van to Colorado. So mm -hmm. he lives in Colorado. Gotcha. Yeah. 
that you guys have a pretty, it seems like in the North America you guys are more free ride focused, is that fair? Yeah, no, no, no definitely. On uh, North America, I mean, even like the series as a whole, I'm trying to put together a DH team, and yeah. there's really not that many that do a global World, yeah. world Cup. There's individuals, they're not big, pretty big teams, but there isn't like a huge amount of teams out there mm -hmm. as far as, um, like there is like, yeah, um, the Europe side. So. Is there, <coughs> Is there a lot of marketing value in the free riders? Because you guys actually have a really stacked yeah. free ride team. Yeah, we they have and we've kind of focused on that. I think a lot of like the rocks like original um, prototype prototyping and testing was was based off a lot of the uh, free riders feedbacks. Okay. And um, even before we got into the World Cup stuff and that, I mean that rocks has won three uh, rampage like wins. Yeah. I, I know. I mean Sorgi's brought up to two like uh, like two Carson's got like that ends. Uh, I mean, like, there's there's podiums definitely on that 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 rocks are on rampage. It's, it's pretty successful all that time. So. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Yeah, and then just the, even the riders as a whole, like we've kind of always had that. I mean, it's really, um, like with free rider, like you can you can do so much. Like the the brand, like the videos and the products and everything they've done. It's just a great great value to for the amount that they do. Yeah, and uh, just it seems like fit sit. Really well with like as our son tour, yeah, and uh, like how we brought this stuff up. Yeah, it seems like Carson's one of those people when he puts out a video, no one skips over it. No, Carson, <laughs> Carson's amazing. Um, I wish I, yeah, like as far as him as the athlete, he's probably one of the hardest working, yeah, genuine dudes out there, and he comes up with projects and sort of makes my job easy. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's good. Um, and then we talked about this briefly before, but. Sun Tour is the title sponsor of Mega Avalanche. When are we going? Well, it just ended. I, I, I'm very uh, have a lot of FOMO because um, I was yeah. actually offered to stay and to to uh, ride Mega, and I should have. I don't know why I didn't, but I was already in here for a month, and I was just kind of just wanted to get back. Um, I was just not catching up with my other like work stuff, so um, and decided to definitely go back. But Mega is the craziest event just like what you see a video or anything like that I, i've never seen it in person but just the athletes that are there i was chatting back with nick um a little bit about it and just his experience running over a dude <laughs> like i don't know if you saw that video but you're not selling this to my wife oh it's awesome <laughs> oh okay <laughs> uh that experience is gonna be insane just going yeah. down a glacier with 150 people in tow and just trying to pull it in so i think that's it's just would remind me of everything I did racing BMX bikes and going into like one turn, just fighting with that, which yeah. is 150 people. Yeah. Or how many like around that that stage? It's just it's insane. It's, it's got to be. It's on my checklist. It's we should high on my bucket. Let's let's do it. So I mean, if we can get there, and basically we could probably yeah make it so it's like floor space, all that. We can make it pretty pretty cheap. Very tall for that. So um, so uh, this is kind of a two parter. What is the coolest place that your job has taken you stateside and globally to ride? Um, like state, like stateside. Um, are you talking about North America? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Let's go with North America. Yeah, as far as North America, like I truly love like BC and North, like Pacific Northwest, like Bellingham area. Um, I did like one of the first like media trips I ever went on was uh, like a. Duralux World to like a Duralux World Tour kind of thing. We got all the athletes and everything together in just a like Pacific Northwest, um, Bellingham area, and then into Canada and just like Vancouver Island and just that whole this Whistler is its own thing. Like your first experience there is just it's awesome. But like Squamish, like a lot of the trails, it's like Squamish and, and Bellingham. I think some of the trails that I, I got right out there were just just awesome. Yeah, but I think I think just that I can't name one tree. Even just like, that region just like gets to me, just like big trees, just yeah. like the, the dirt, the, 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 the dirt in the forest, and everything is just amazing. Um, but yeah, like globally, you think that's the number one? Well, it's what like <clears throat> globally, like I don't know. You're such a majestic. I don't know. Just like I don't. It's totally different than anything here. So because the stuff you were doing in Austria. Yeah, Austria, I think it's probably, there's a bike park like every, 
every two hours, you know, in Europe, oh, in Europe, like, and I don't know, like Schlattman, I had a blast there. Um, I just had the most time to ride there. Well, well, I was there as far as like testing and was able to in between and, and wake up early and just climb a mountain and just kind of bring in like all the like cows and goats <laughs> that are all on the trail. Um, and that like European like mountain view. So I mean the Alps are beautiful and just uh, everything there is super steep. So it's a different it's a different style of riding. Putting more spacers underneath my stem and just getting used to riding riding that like steeper stuff is yeah was is, is awesome. So I don't I'd have to say like I really like climbing. Um, that was just because I got to ride a little, uh, a little bit more than I did at the other places. Yeah. Um, well, it, was, it, it shows a little bit more. Guys, what do you remember? Yeah. Was it, it you I could tell that you were like on point. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure that trick paid off. Maybe. Yeah, no, I think but it's you just, were I think it's mostly just um you seemed more confident on your bike than like say when we went to Wing Rock. Not that you didn't look confident, but you looked like you'd spent some time in the mountain, like you were you yeah. were sweet. I mean um Marquette and everything that's super fun. It was it's it's there's like very small sections of like Steve. Yeah. Um and I was just comfortable with like the that small yeah, it's not that much elevation. It's which was less pedaling. It'd be a lot better going down there. Right. Like, so it's chugging just, along. So it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy. You, for me. you versus 145 pound kid. On a, yeah, I just watch this kid. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little faster. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask you a couple of uh, SR Sun Tour questions. Okay. You guys have the Duralux Sport, which is what I run, and you have the new Duralux EQ. Correct. For people looking at this for, what is the difference? Um, maybe, maybe more of us. What's the difference in the way it rides? It's definitely like a little bit more supple, and it's just easy and to adjust. Like my main, my major thing is like we're taking the spring out of it. It's a full air system from what we've had in the past. Um, the negative, positive, like chamber is like preset for you. Um, you're just putting air in. You set sag, and it's ready, like ready to go. Like if you're trying to run extremes, like a really stiff fork, and you have a negative uh, coil. It, you need to change the like spring rate on right. the, the negative to kind of really dial it in, um, and or you can switch from like a rider my way to like a little sixty pound um, like shredder. Um, the set the setup on that side. So, but as far as the feel, it's just just more supple and like supportive um, right. from, from that side. So it's it's night day a little bit different. Just even like the the feel of initial breakaway and just uh, overall feel too. Okay, so one thing I see a lot online is people wondering about the uh, SR Sun Tour upgrade program. Can you kind of explain that a little bit? Yeah, it's a great program. Um, Sun Tour makes a full range product from basic entry level stuff um, to full carbon fiber, like World Cup, like winning cross country forks to downhill. Um, the idea is basically to take someone from more of a basic entry level stuff that's going to have like have uh, like steel stanchions and alloy like motors case and then move them up to like our midline or even up into our high, like higher end product. Um, the discount basically say like here's an example like like the XT like XTT like on most like most common fork out there it's like 28 millimeter stanchions steel legs uh, um, alloy lowers and like the rate on the next step up like the first like one that's made out of our Taiwan factory has magnesium lowers and an air system. Um, it has alloy, alloy stanchions, uh, magnesium lowers, and air and, and air spring. You can do an upgrade from that, and it basically loses three pounds every foot. So I mean, those are like sub thousand dollar bikes that are out there. There's there's a great hardtail. There's a great like like yeah. entry bikes. Just like the biggest things you can upgrade is probably suspension or wheels. Yeah. As far as to make a huge difference, like at the end of the day, your bike's going to shift, and you know, like it's not going to be as crisp, but it's still going to shift in the next gear and do all like that. But as far as weight wise, it's like and beneficial for like actual riding. Is suspension and wheels are going to make the biggest biggest change. And the program we run is awesome because it's it gives you like a twenty five percent discount. Um, we just need the serial number off of like your fork. You can bring it into the dealer. You can do it uh, remotely. Like you can do it um, either through the dealer or through through the, the online process. So we're just yeah, if you go to the North America site and you can log in and and, and you get the upgrade program through there. So it's about twenty five percent off at MSRP. We just want to extend that 
someone on more of an entry level stuff and get them into uh, the, ne the next level to like help them with the routing. So yeah. there's a huge difference between the, the, the two products. Um, they're both great products for the price point, but they're forks at that price point. So you can't compare the entry level stuff to our higher end stuff. Yeah. Um, it's even though we share the same brand name, it's it's there's so much difference between the between the two, and we have a full range. We just happen to make forks for all all price points. Yeah. And there are so many people running those like <coughs> uh, XCT forks on the cheaper bikes. But I've been noticing it seems like Suntour is starting to get spec on some higher end bikes too. Yeah, I mean, is that, is that more that's coming down? Yeah. Have you been noticing that? Because I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, like we're more of our like <laughs> mid, like higher, like you started branching to like our mid higher. So like uh, to me, like man, like anything the magnesium lower of the time on factory is kind of our like like our you start breaking into like more of a performance like performance for. Um, and little by little, we've been like getting spec, especially in North America. Uh, we've been very popular in, on the Europe side uh, for years, and like there's. The whole brands that just have as our center throughout the whole the whole thing. It's just a, uh, just a little bit different in the North American market um, from from that standpoint. From a product uh, product manager standpoint, like you can spec a lot of fork versus like another brand mm -hmm. uh, for the same price. So because since we make everything in house, like we make our lowers, we do our forging in house, and we do most all the small parts like from that one end to then is a complete product of like out the other we're not sourcing as much as like other, like other brands we able to put a package together that like has a really good like set of versions like another competitor of ours so if like a product manager for like said company wants to spec a 30 like a, a competitor's fork we get for the same price price offer bigger aluminum stanchions yeah or an air like thing versus <coughs> coil versus just having that other brand yeah, yeah. As far as bike setup goes, what is the number one thing you see people do wrong with their suspension setup? Is there is there a thing? The number, like the a number one, the number one easy like easy setup. You can mess up all the adjustments all you want, but if you don't set sag or have like your bike in like from front to back centered in wherever your body position is, that's going to be the hugest thing. So it's like really taking the time to figure out exactly what works for you. And write down your settings, mm -hmm. and consistently before you go ride, and have um, have that air pressure ready to go, and like on your phone in notes, yep. and your bike consistently. It, it's night and day difference how much that like will change how co confident you are, and just doing one step at a time. Don't try to change too much in anything you're tuning, but like focus on one thing, find what works best for you, and just get the the, the sag and everything. It's just seeing people just come out and have to touch their bike in two weeks or like like a three months and just jump on and did there on their corner the floor shock. It's just it's Are you attacking me for not riding? No, 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 no. <laughs> You're actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you, you usually have that like no, no option. Um and tire pressure. I mean like suspension, like not even on the suspension side, it's like it's the same thing as tire pressure. It's the most like crucial like thing. Just one PSI, like doing testing with some of these like World Cup guys just if you were one PSI or half a PSI off, like even in the floor for shock or and in the tires, they'll they'll be able to they'll tell a difference between that. Yeah, I, I've heard that like specifically, like people saying when you can notice a half a pound in these tires. Yeah, one, like one hundred percent. Like that's a huge thing. Like traction, like you get so much testing and so much time on doing the same run down one hill to master it, and you can tell the difference between they they can tell the difference between that, that half PSI and it like that. If, Difference between sliding out and holding that turn is all based on those numbers. Yep. That was what works for them to be able to push that much. I tell people all the time, and I think I've showed it in some of my videos, that I do actually keep a Google document with my suspension yeah. setup. And I actually have multiple, and that was something I wanted to ask you. It's like, so a lot of people have like a, a one do all bike. Mm -hmm. It's like bikes are so expensive. That's what I have. Have. It's hard <laughs> to have multiple bikes. So do you have multiple different setups? For what you're riding, like say we're gonna go for Milwaukee. There's a Milwaukee gnarly here. We're gonna go ride cross country, but then tomorrow we're gonna go ride Wind Rock. Do you have two different suspension setups? Ish? Uh, I never really like those like two things. Like I do, like if, usually in the beginning of the season, if I'm not as strong, I, I kind of 
feel a little bit more sad because I'm just like getting fatigued when I go to like longer like longer places. Like riding Wind Rock and like I haven't rode a whole bunch. Like yeah. I'll actually soften up just a little bit in the beginning until like because I'm just fatigued out by the end of the like the, the end of the run. Um, and then throughout the year, I'm always just going stiffer and stiffer. And then when I'm switching between Milwaukee to um, as I get stronger through the year, um, I really push to have like a really pro like progressive, just really supportive um, setup. So I'm usually running pretty high, like like higher at the inside. So gotcha. So let's talk about the new. Can I pull it down? The trier trier two. Yeah, sure. Pull it down. This is the trier two shock. Yep. And I saw it on big bikes, so technically it's already been announced. Is it available? Currently, so like, uh, like as it's it's not available quite like quite yet. Actually, like as far as having stock in, there might be there's some some out there, and OEMs can't order. But it's currently it's just it's like vaporware right now, just because of the times. And, yeah. And uh, with like the group your shop, so uh, they are coming available um, like here soon, like here soon, as far as like getting stock in. I think I just got the view and all the, the details that are going to so I can actually start to put orders in for them. Gotcha. So I had the first, like most of the, everything that's out there in that right there is the first, like, prototypes of the product. Now I will say, it looks really badass. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm glad, it's super, like, as far as out of the box, first, like, prototype uh, thing we had, like, had, it was, uh, it was really cool. And, like, really, it's, there hasn't been any much changes internally. Like, usually we go through a Whole bunch of iterations. You're saying not much has changed uh, from the stop, like the first, like off the drawing to okay, to, like okay. to to um to production like level, like where it's actually set. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's just getting faster and faster. The, the the big negative chamber on there just is really supple and supportive. So yeah. that was one thing I was going to ask actually. Like, what what is the difference you guys want from like a chamber? Yeah, it'll be like a try like the try air. You're looking so. There's a difference. There's a trier, so it's a change in the piggyback. Um, we do an IFP piston, and there's a big IFP piston in there um, that um, just creates clearance for a lot more frames. Okay. Um, being being shorter, so you can, if you bottom out, this is just going to give uh, a little bit more more room. So gotcha. with that, we also changed to a bigger size shaft, uh, and it's uh, like a steel a steel shaft. Okay. Does that help with like? Uh, like um, bigger, bigger no, just like as far as like the, there's a lot bigger spec of like um, e-bikes as well too. So uh, we're running yeah. a lot there, so just creating that product to be anything like a, just a little bit like just creating a stronger like product for just heavier, heavier bikes and things like that yes. as well too. And, um, there's a lot more bushing support in the, this one uh, versus the, the original trier because you're just going to longer, longer lengths and just to get a little bit better like bushing overlap, it has um, just for like a longer and then getting on heavy bikes, like if it's specced on, say, like you know, a big 180 mil, like you full on, on full on e bike, like, true, like yeah, like e bike, um, that's kind of like it's just being able to the strength to go a little bit more on that with, with that spec. So it kind of bridges between a uh, normal like shock to like being able to do a little bit more, like gnarlier weight bikes and a bigger handle. Can you talk at all about maybe some future projects or anything that's coming online? I know that's always a great area to talk about. Um, there is one that's kind of been talked about. I think it's even brought in Big Bike. So, I mean, uh, we can delete this later <laughs> <laughs> if I can. But uh, this is Duralux 30 e So, oh. it's a 38 mil extension Duralux that's going to be like, coming out. And I think that's basically been like released like already in, in form and, and, and releases from there. So. Um, that's like the, the next big big project I think that's gonna hit. That's really gonna, I'm super psyched for. Yeah, it's just cool. to I actually didn't know that. So that yeah, was crazy so to me. So just like 180 mil to like a 200 mil. I mean, you yeah. can obviously run 160 to like yeah yeah 1 190 200 mil. Or somebody like, like, like single ground your height. That I bet that would be a huge benefit. Yeah, like it's it's also just it's just it's got a real big big crown. Um, we're gonna have two like two options on it. Like there's a big. Like the big e bike spec, it's gonna be like a 74 millimeter crown. Okay. Like on the top, just to like blend in with the down tube and be able to, you just get a lot, like with 38 mil, just we want to make a really beefy like crown, just so it doesn't fatigue out. Um, a lot of, I think a lot of spec on these bikes are going in heavier stuff. Um, and even more aggressive riding, just start getting creepy 
pounds. And the cool thing about Sunder is we've always been, we always tend to go a little bit heavier weight just to kind of avoid those issues. Yeah. Um, and like with that 38, it's, it's going to be, it's just something that's super hard and really aggressive on the floor. 38 is going to be, it's going to be awesome for us. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Suspension related? You want to talk shit on anybody? No, that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> not, 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 not here, not here to do that. Like, not much as uh, uh, you know, I'd love to, I'm I just want to talk more about how, like, you know, this next enduro race, we're just going to have to really throw it out, you know? And, yeah. Um, we'll go out and train. If I get there a day earlier, maybe I won't pull off the trail three times, but... You know what I want to talk about? Yeah. We keep saying we're going to do, like, some gravel rides and shit. Yeah. Suntour has that sweet... Ah, like the GR... GBS. The GBS. The GBS, yeah. So the GBS. It's having a big sale, because, like, I thought that was cool. I think it's really rad. It's starting to grow. There's, like, a whole market of E, like, gravel bikes that are getting built. Um, there's... Norco was probably, like, uh... Rachel from Norco was, like, a, one of the first people to jump on that project and created a bike around it. So there's like, there is really cool gravel bike with the with it on there. Yeah. And, and just so we can clarify, just in case people don't know, it's actually like a gravel suspension fork. How much gravel is it? It's not mud. It's yeah, 60? It's, yeah, I think it's like 60 to 40. Okay. Right? So you just, yeah. yeah, you switch, you can switch the travel, everything on that too. Um, it's really cool. Like I've ridden it on Darren's bike and uh, like his, I haven't put it on my gravel bike yet, um, but it's so fun in Madison because it's so cool, like little like trails, it's offshoot of like very simple like cross country stuff, and having that fork is the coolest bike to have in that town, just because it's just like you ride a trail, like, and you can just jump off and actually ride some like cross country stuff, and I don't know, it was, it's, yeah, it does it's very good. supple, I don't feel it, like feel there, I was jumping, and like it's, wasn't didn't feel like it's bottoming out at 40 like psi it like, runs pretty high PSI, like uh, pressures but yeah. more than you compare like on the stuff because it has such a small air chamber but it's so awesome to just like cruise down the trail and just not feel like, like just all the small little chatters you're like yeah, the carpet just, kind of, just, just like, yeah just like it just like washes a lot of that out and i think on a really long gravel like hit the gravel ride or if you're pushing with their miles and, or even just have fun like that all around like like drop bar bike is even around here like i just drop in and ride my i always ride my like gravel bike off road most of like well, i mean obviously it's designed like i use it mostly as a road bike yeah but then have the ability to like just rip into a trail and hop over some logs and like do that but having a suspension for it is, is an awesome category of you know, to yeah. get a bike that it, it, it actually makes it up it's is uh is something the only brand that has that no, there's like there's I mean like Fox has like there's basically a cross country fork that like dropped oh, down. Okay. I think some of the, I think they might have just came with a new one. Um, there's some people that are starting to catch on, but like Sancho was the first person that directly put like flat mount like a spec like flat mount brake made it specifically with an actual like roadish like look, yeah. and it was designed for um, it was designed for the 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 actual coming from road and gravel. Brake. Versus just being a mountain bike fork, and it's just short, yeah. short, modified, yeah, yeah. modified, it's like uh, cross country fork. So. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, that's all I got. Um. Yeah. Thanks for. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for, thanks for uh, sharing some info. No problem. Can't yeah, wait to get to that new EQ fork. So. Yeah, I'm excited to try it. I want to see like your comparison between the the older Duralux to the new air like new air system. Yep. I think that's going to be really good once you get on the trail. We maybe just do some tuning. I was hoping to bring bike today. Maybe I should have a note on that. Um, and then with this humidity, the last thing I'm thinking about is going for a mountain bike ride. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this this just talking here in the corner of my garage. It looks really nice here. So you should see. We're dying. <laughs> How hot it is. <laughs> like I need a fan. I need it. But um, yeah, yeah, I think tomorrow I'm going to do. I'm going to ride to Duralux, and then I'm going to swap it out for the EQ on there. And mm -hmm. I'm just so I'm, I'm like it's fresh. Yeah. Off the Duralux. Because that's how I want to do it. Cool. So, yeah, I think that'd be a good way. I just want to see the night and day difference for you. And you should, uh, you should definitely enjoy it. I think it's, it's it just, even the sound, just feel is is a huge, huge improvement. And I've been excited about this one for a while. So, yeah, I'm excited to try it. So, yeah, John Wells. You can follow him on some social medias. What is it? JW Moto. Something like that. I'll, I'll, He's right, BMX or something. Yeah. I should probably change it to 6061.
one since I sold out a long time ago. Or Garmin. Yeah. KW yeah. Moto Garmin. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so thanks for uh, having me over and showing me some of your, your, uh, your shop. Yeah, no problem. And uh, see you out on the trail soon. Sweet.